Hey, what is going on everyone? Destroyer here, back with another replay cast of a uh, regular Battle from the 2 today. So, we'll be looking at a 2v2 on Buckland. With, uh, let's see, 4,000 resources, yep, definitely. So, we got Destroyer, as the dwarves, myself there. And Long Con is in this game, so this is a no rules game then. So, there is that. He is my partner, and he is Goblins. And the other team today is... Sezadi? Sezade? <laughs> Let's call him Zade. Or Z Zade. Let's call him Zade. That sounds easy. And we have Grizzly as his partner today, as Isengard. So, what was it again? <laughs> I've already forgotten. Sazade, Zadi, Zadi. God, whatever. Goblins he is coming up with a spider pit and a goblin cave there. Since we have Prebane being purchased by Isengard, so he's doing a little spying. Duncan has his goblin king there. I'm opening with a two halls of warriors and a archery range. So I'm probably opting not to get a hero in this game, it looks like. I'm just going mass dwarf troops. I feel it's a pretty good strategy, actually. As dwarf troops are really good, especially in number early game. They're hard to deal with. So I think it's a good strategy. We have a Saruman out for a Grizzly. Interesting. That could be, could be interesting. Not sure how well that'll work against the goblins, but we'll see. Although Long Con doesn't actually have anything at the moment, so who knows how that's going to turn out. Long Con has a tendency to do strange things in our TV2 games. So, let's see, I have a very large army heading towards the center here. Looks like I will capture the outpost. Definitely want to get the extra resources generating as quickly as possible. Isengard looks like he's coming out with some Urukai and some crossbows on the way, as well as having a Warg Sentry there. One of the things I pretty much have never built in my life, although I hear they're pretty good. At least some Rise of the Witch King there. I don't know about this. We have some Spider Riders out from Sezade, and a bunch of Goblin Warriors coming out to supplement them as well. So we'll have some Goblin Spam with some Spider Riders. That would be pretty effective, I think. And yeah, Warg Sentry just having one Warg. Okay. And it looks like I'm sending a pretty big attack of dwarves into the Goblin base here. We'll see how effective that is. Let's take a look at what power I have. Blumcon doesn't have a power. I actually haven't bought a power yet. I'll probably get Raleigh Call, I imagine. Maybe Freebane, as we know, and Cave Bats from the Goblins. Looks like I do first Rallying Call. That is the best power to start with, especially if you're going with a uh, battle hero. And we have, looks like Long Con threw down a Tain of Land for me, so that's nice. Tain of Land in this patch gives you 50% armor only, but still pretty good. Making dwarves quite tanky, hard to deal with. Like some Earth Hat and Grizzly have been sent over to help deal with this. So we'll begin picking off our Axlers there. And the cave bats being thrown over my troops to boom or weaken them. I'm going to attack. So I'm doing no right amount of damage, but I am slowly dying here. Actually, a little more quickly than slowly. As these cave bats and this overwhelming amount of troops is actually going to be killed. I am putting a forward point in, in uh, Sazadi's base, though. So that could be interesting. And I have a very large group of dwarves heading for the mine shaft. Let's see how many is actually in there. Just three at the moment. I probably have more guys queued up. And Longcon is building trolls and goblin archers in my base. So that is where his uh his base is. And it seems the goblins have found my forward mine. What is my building next to it here? A statue. Yeah, trying to throw down a heroic statue. Better defend my forward mine shaft here. But I guess I have some Goblin Warriors behind it, and I'm seeking away at that forward mine. Definitely getting around the back there is the best idea he has there. So if he can take a lot of damage, he'll be able to hit the mine shaft better. So I do get some more pikemen out of there. 
before that does go down. And I'm assuming it will. Actually, it's going to be pretty close. Nope. And my rebuild going off just a second too late to save that. It's unfortunate. As you see, I do have rebuild. Goblins getting close to five power points. They could potentially get a power as well. But I am keeping the troops coming. And my partner, Honkani, is continuing to level up his gore kill there. And it looks like he is arming his cave trolls with goblins. He will be throwing those at the fortress, no doubt. As some of you are aware, that takes fortresses down really fast, throwing goblins for some reason with the cave trolls and hat them from the six. It's a bit too overpowered and it's a bit silly, but it w it's quite effective. Grizzly is amassing an army of Isengard troops there. Doesn't look like he's doing a whole lot though with them, at least at the moment. We do still have a heroic statue here, so that'll be nice. Putting forward another forward mine there. Continue to put troops out. As you see, I have four battalions in there already, and I have a. Well, I had a decent sized army out here already. My x are dying to these crossbows, as well as these fighter riders. Definitely some pikes out there. Phalanxes. Making their way out to the battle. And it looks like I attack moving a lot of guys, as I, <laughs> I have a tendency to move my army all at once. And as dwarves, you don't really want to do that, because uh, you guys need to be sent to the mine shaft to get over here faster. But, I guess they will make it over here eventually. And my forward mine looks like it will be taken down here. I do demolish that to save it. Save the resources, I guess. And I'll begin carving my way through these goblins. He will be able to keep the goblin spam up, but I think eventually I will overwhelm him with a good amount of dwarves. As you see, he has eight power points. He's getting pretty close to getting something. Uh, he has knocked down my outpost, which is annoying. Never like when that happens. Immediately throwing down another forward mine, though. As dwarves, you definitely want to keep the forward mines up. I think it's very important. It's something I actually need to work on more. In this game, I seem to be doing pretty good, but in general, with goblins and uh, dwarves, I tend not to put forward mines as much as I should. I can just move my armies on foot. Dwarves, you're very slow. We do have dwarf kill here. Give leadership to my dwarven troops. So they'll be getting 25% armor and 25% more experience. Strange, uh, strange uh, leadership power. 25% armor for goblins is really crap. It should really be like a damage buff or something. Or just the regular 35% armor and damage buff. That's why I like Rise of the Witch King's leadership. It's all generalized. It's all one. In this patch 1.06, it's all like different kinds of leadership. It's so annoying. You have Gimli who boosts armor, and you have Ergo or Boromir who boosts pictures of damage. It's like, ugh. It's too many different leaderships to remember, really. And in come some cave trolls, but not really needed, but still, nonetheless, nice to have. And as you see, that fort does go down. And he did actually, I missed it, but he took down the other fort. With throwing goblins. Which takes the town extremely fast. Saruman having no chance of stopping this amount of cave trolls. Also claiming the ring for himself. So Grizzly is dead, and it looks like Sahaz Sazade will be dead as well. <laughs> Still having trouble pronouncing that person's name. Could be Zadie even. Who knows? I just wish everyone was named Bob. It would make things much easier for me. But what fun is that? And it looks like Isengard is still alive over here, but only barely. Only just. And as you see, the top team, my team, having absolutely no trouble. You know, the opposing team, Zadi, has been defeated. So this goblin player is dead. And his buildings are taken over by Grizzly over here. Grizzly not quitting out of the game, though. Looks like he will continue to uh, make his stuff there. But I will be moving my troops over that way. I have to go through this white. I did an attack move, I'm sure. It happens a lot. I'm gonna get stuck on the white. There will be at least one last skirmish between Isengard and the dwarves here. We still have the Sun Men of Dale, thankfully. We'll be 
them, but I'm about to get hit with a wizard blast. Oh, and Saruman actually missing a good opportunity to the blast there. Still getting a decent fireball off. Run the troops into the fire though. Patch 1.06, uh, the fireball leaves a giant fire, which is very destructive. Don't want to walk through that, that is for certain. So Isengard actually has some troops in the tower here. Troops from in there. And Saruman's still alive. Still kicking ass, taking names. As the old wizard always does. But I will definitely need more reinforcements here. But Grizzly is kind of on his last legs. As you might imagine, he's missing most of his base. He has a few battalions of guys here and there. As soon as Saruman dies, really, that's all he has. Once the troops guarding Saruman dies, I should say. Or when we left all alone. And the soul Saruman is not too difficult to deal with if you can avoid getting all your troops killed by a wizard blast and fireball. And what is this? We have another war sentry coming up. I don't think they actually do anything unless you have wargs in them. Oh, okay, he's putting wargs into it. And he will probably release that at some point. I should try these out just to play with them a little bit. Maybe. Maybe someday. And hopefully I don't want the guys in the fire. The few dwarves are unlucky enough to get st stopped from the fire there, but... And this part of the and, yeah. <laughs> See, fire is very dangerous. As those dwarves can attest. I think we're putting up a decent defense here. This is the last... Last hurrah here. The blast going down again there. Oh no, that was actually a slam. We have a going here. He's getting knocked down by some of knocked back. Quite, quite difficult to deal with. If there was any hero that I felt was worthy of a knockback, having it was Saruman. I feel it's just having Saruman have a knockback. Boromir has a knockback as well. I don't feel that's necessary. I feel it's a bit overpowered on Boromir. Saruman, I mean, he's not very good in melee combat, so he might as well give him a knockdown. It makes him very hard to kill as a single one-on-one -on -one fight there. So I'm setting Gloin to use his Shatter Hammer. Shake Foundation, I mean. He immediately takes that tower down. If he had Slam, he could kill all these guys at once. He fell through, but it doesn't look like it's done yet. Might be by the time he gets to use it. No, nope, I will retreat because I am actually on health here. Doesn't look like my partner's doing much of anything anymore. He has taken my fort, actually. I lied. <laughs> uh, long time. I forgot. He tries to kill me once we're, like, in a good position. It happens. But I am continuing to fight on the less. And it looks like I could actually be killed here. Is that my last building? Do I notice my base is gone? I do have a siege works down here, thankfully. But he may kill me off. I'm putting a forward mine here. I can't actually heal my Gloin, unfortunately, because my fortress is destroyed by my partner. I do have a lot of power points as well I could have used. But, yep, fort is gone, unfortunately. My troops are dwindling. And Isengard is starting to rebuild here, which is highly unfortunate. I'm not a huge fan of when Hong Kong does this, if I'm honest. It annoys me quite greatly, but he has killed me. And now I had to wait for this game to end because he decided to kill me instead of the enemy, which is annoying as hell. But he does some, have some cave trolls. A decent amount of them, in fact, as well as a gore kill. So hopefully this shouldn't take too long for him to finish off the opponents. Yeah, to drag to actually select the building. You can't really see the health bar though very well. And there goes one Eric Pit. And this one will follow suit, it looks like. Definitely enough cave trolls to do the job. Goblin's actually putting a fortress in. Oh, it's Grizzly's Fortress. Because he took control of the, uh, his teammate's builder, he managed to get a 
Goblin Fortress. That's interesting. But it looks like actually these cave dwellers are going to be picked off by the Viking here. It's armor. It's unfortunate. But yeah, it looks like uh, Grizzly's last buildings are dying here. And I think at this point I'll just fast forward a bit. Because probably not a whole lot's going to happen. No. I guess we can see the counterattack from Isengard. Although there's so many spider link expansions here, I don't know if can make them put the away here. Actually, let's take a look at the power points from Isengard. He does have the Watcher and Industry and Free Vein, but that's not going to help him much. There's no army to use Watcher on, really. Albums don't have much in the way of powers. Just cave bats and tame land. Oops. And Saruman will begin. Killed here by these spiderlings plus the arrow towers. Doing a good job tanking him. <laughs> these archers are actually doing literally no damage to this. It's a tunnel here. It just goes to show archers without fire arrows. Not very useful. Watch are being thrown down to kill a few cave trolls here. Looks like they will be enough. Fast forward a bit again. This, this may take a lot longer than necessary. Fireball being used on the cave troll. Not gonna kill it. Actually, that one might because it's standing in the fire. We use a fire drink now. Yep, cave trolls here. I feel if he can keep them from getting killed by the pikes, possibly he might want to send the fire drink after the pike and burn a few of them. Keep the cave trolls safe. It's really the only danger these cave trolls have besides Saruman is the pikemen. I guess lurks too if he would actually get out of low mode and to burn it. He dies to cripple him. He can really switch to toggle weapon and switch to carnage. He really wants to kill his fire dragon before kill. Nope. There's a little mishap there. Cave Troll actually hitting the fire dragon with his rock himself and knocking him down, I think. Or well, maybe it was Saruman knocking him down, but I think it was Cave Troll. Saruman can knock him down as well. As you see there. Looks like this is the end of the Isengard possibly, although it does, he might actually run out of cave trolls again. There's enough pike here. So if we need more, is he building more? We can only hope. He is building more, but they're going to be on the way. Not quite here yet. Fast forward again. There's another cave troll. A couple actually. This fortress taking a beating though. Cave Troll goes down. This Cave Troll desperately attempting to destroy this fortress. Looks like he's going to manage to get it done. Alright, and that is the end of the Cave Troll. Let's fast forward some. Looks like another Goblin Horde is on the way. Here we go. Hopefully this will be the end. Like I said, this game would have been over like 10 minutes ago in, in game. My partner. But it happens. And Grizzly has been defeated. So, yep, that has been that game. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. And I will see you in the next cast of Battle for Middle 2. See you next time.